Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome once again to another CUBE conversation from our Palo Alto studios. Uh, recently, we had Fortigard Labs here on the CUBE talking about a regular report that they do on the state of the security industry. And once again, we've got Anthony John Domenico yeah, good. here to talk about the most recent, the Q1 update. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about Fortigard Labs. Where does this come from? Ah, so Fortigard Labs actually is the threat intelligence organization of Fortinet. So what we do is we keep track of the tactics, techniques, and procedures of the adversary and make sure that we have detection methodologies to be able to stop all those tactics, techniques, and procedures. So you're the ones that are collecting the data that's right from the ground to help everybody keep up to date on where the threats are likely to be set priorities. So that's what this report does, right? Abs absolutely, it's something we do on a quarterly basis and it's really, you know, we're looking at um, billions of events that we're observing in real time, you know, production environments and what we're trying to do is identify the top application exploits, malware, and botnets and, and what we want to be able to do is find different types of trends that then can be able to translate into helping organizations fortify their environments. All right, so here, this is the Q1 2018, people can get access to it. Yep. What's the top line? change? Yeah, well at a high level, I think the, uh, you, know, so, you know, one, the actual cyber criminals, um, they're evolving their attack methodologies to be able to increase their, you know, success rate, as well as being able to increase their infection rate. So that's one thing. You know, the other thing, obviously, we always have to talk about ransomware that, you know, seems to be a very uh, hot threat these days for cyber criminals to make money. Now, that threat isn't going away. We did see a slight decrease though, where the adversaries were more interested in hijacking um, you know, systems to be able to mine for cryptocurrencies as opposed to you know, taking that machine hostage and demanding a ransom. Really? Yeah, you believe it or not. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit, I mean ransomware just seems like it would have so much potential and cryptocurrencies are, well, they're interesting. But yeah. tell us a little bit about why that's happening. What's, what seems to be the indicators? Yeah, well, you know, like I said, ransomware isn't going away. I think they're going to continue to use that to make money. Um, but from a crypto jacking you know, perspective, we did see the uptake last year in our Q4 report. It was about 13% of the organizations actually re uh, reported some type of crypto jacking attack. Um, fast forward to this report and it nearly doubled, actually over doubled to you know, 28%. So that's about one in four organizations are actually impacted with this particular threat. Um, now, what I think is interesting about this particular threat is the way it evolves, right? Because it's so new, it's always looking back at its other successful you know, predecessors to be able to determine how can I be more stealthy and how can I get my you know, malware or my you know, payload out to all the different sort of systems. So you know, an example of that is fileless malware. Fileless malware is very stealthy. It's starting to use fileless malware techniques. It'll use um, scripts to inject uh, their actual payload into memory, nothing on disk, so makes it a lot more difficult to be able to detect. Now, how do I get my payload out to all the other um, you know, workstations? Well, it takes a one-two punch combination that you know, Petya used last year. It's leveraging, um, uh, you know, there's this open source technology called you know, Mimikatz steals different types of credentials and does something called pass the hash, passes that hash credential out to those other systems and then it gains access that way it can actually pass the actual malware from system to system. If that fails, it then goes back to identifying different vulnerabilities that could have then exploit. One vulnerability it does look for is Eternal Blue, which was the vulnerability that was so graciously given to us from shadow brokers. Um, so those are the ways that they're starting to be more effective in being more stealthy and also being able to propagate a lot faster. And cryptocurrency obviously is one of the more interesting things because you take over the computer resources without necessarily stealing any data. You're just grabbing computer resources. Yeah, which is interesting. I don't want to actually kind of go off topic here, but that's another conversation. Is crypto jacking actually a threat or not? Right, because all it's really doing is stealing, you know, CPU resources. So, you know, so people say. So that's a whole other discussion to actually get into. And is, is it actually really a threat or not? Well, if you're able to get access to a computer, presumably you're able to act, get access not just for that purpose, but maybe others. Exactly. So that's exactly. probably an indication yes. you may have a problem. Yes. But let's talk about ransomware. You said the ransomware is not going away. Uh, ransomware, most folks are familiar with it. What is it, what's the report suggest? No, Peter, did you realize that this month is the one year anniversary of WannaCry? 
don't know if you remember that or not, but you know, WannaCry was very infamous for not necessarily the payload, but by the way that it actually was able to spread so fast and affect so many different machines. Now, that spreading, that worm-like spreading um, kind of capability still exists here. You know, today you see a lot of different sort of threats using that, but what seems to be a bit different now is the combination of that ransomware payload along with more targeted attacks. Mm. So usually in a ransomware type of attack, um, you do some type of spamming campaign, you spam out that email, you know, and you know, see what sticks. Well, these are more, a lot more targeted, so they're gonna spend a lot more time doing re, you know, reconnaissance on an organization and being able to find different vulnerabilities on the outside of the network. Once they actually come in, very methodical at how they're able to laterally move and put their actual malware on systems that they actually think, um, you, know, uh, you know, however many systems they think they should actually have that particular malware on. Now, at this point, they hadn't actually executed uh, you know, the actual payload, so they have it on as many systems as, as uh, possible, and once they're ready, they flip the switch, and all those systems now are held hostage. That impact is much greater to the business. Now, when we think about the uh, attacks, we take, think in terms of computing devices, whether it's a mobile device or a PC device or servers or whatnot, but are we seeing any changes in how people are attacking other computing resources within a network, hitting routers and other to try to drive more control over some of these network resources? Well, I mean, we definitely see exploits um, that are actually hitting you know, mobile devices, they're hitting routers, um, a lot of IoT, or, uh, you know, IoT as well, but also web technology, because you know, web technology, there's so much external facing websites these days, you know, they're much easier target. So we are seeing that. Um, I would mention also that um, it's up 7% to 21% of organizations have actually reported uh, mobile malware as well. And that is a, a, a especially difficult thing because your mobile applications are not just associated with a particular business, but other businesses as well. And so you are both an employee and a consumer, and if your mobile applications get hit, that can have enormous ramifications on a number of different levels. Yeah, absolutely, and I think sometimes, you know, an organization or not, uh, um, an actual consumer will have a phone, and they won't necessarily think that it's the same as their workstation, so it's like, oh, well, not that much can happen on my mobile phone, right? It's not right. the same as on my workstation, but actually it could be even worse. Yeah, so if we think about some of the things that's on the horizon, uh, you mentioned that we're seeing uh, a greater utilization of different techniques to make money in some of the new domains, like mm -hmm. uh, jacking, uh, mm -hmm. crypto jacking. Uh, there's still ransomware, still an issue. As folks go back and identify these different malware, these different uh, security breaches, what are they doing to actually clean things up? Are we seeing folks actually cleaning up or is there still just like, just like whack-a-mole, just whacking things out mm -hmm. and worrying about whether or not they go back and clean things up later? Yeah. Well, I, you know, to basically answer your question, they are starting to actually kind of clean up, but you know, wait till you hear this. So, so what we tried to do here uh, in this quarterly report is we wanted to measure how quickly that they were able to kind of clean up that, uh, you know, that particular threat. And what we found out, you know, we used, um, uh, you know, botnet alerts. And we wanted to see how fast those botnet alerts actually got cleaned up. So what we were able to determine is 58% of all organizations within 24 hours were able to clean up that particular botnet infection, which is actually pretty good. But that 42%, it took them either sort of two days or longer, you know, to be able to get that actual threat out. Actually, sometimes the threat really never even, you know, actually went away. Um, great example of that is actually um, the Andromeda botnet. Is uh, you know, it, it's a threat that was brought down last year. But even though it's not there anymore, the infections on the workstations are still there. So we're still kind of getting those actual hits on that Andromeda botnet. And that's actually, that actual threat for Q1 was uh, one of the highest in prevalence and volume. Even if it wasn't necessarily doing damage because we'd figured out how to deal right. with it. But if it's there, somebody might find a way to use it again in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. So as we think about the next quarter, you doing this on, you know, on every quarter, uh, are there any particular areas that you think folks have to, uh, that ne they need to anticipate some of these changes? More of the same, different trends? Or what about OT, for example, as, as mm -hmm. operational technology becomes increasingly part of that common 
technology fabric, mm -hmm. how is that likely to be affected by some of these different yeah. attack types? Yeah, to answer your first question, I think we'll probably see a lot more of the same. And I think what we'll continue to see, um, you know, there's this whole you know, zero day market, I think it's getting more and more mature, meaning that we're going to see more and more vulnerabilities that are actually kind of zero day or that have just been discovered or just been announced. And I think we're going to continue to see the adversaries take advantage of those newly discovered zero day vulnerabilities. Um, you know, they'll take those actual, um, uh, you know, those exploits, you know, put them into their attack methodologies to propagate faster and faster. So I think organizations are going to have to make sure that they can address some of those newly discovered vulnerabilities fairly quickly. Now, as we switch the, you know, the OT side, um, you know, we didn't see uh, a lot of attacks if you look at the percentage of the overall attacks. However, um, you know, OT, if there is an actual successful attack, I think it's, um, you know, it's worth saying that it's a much larger impact, a right? Major problem. You know, my concern is, you know, these different types of trends that are coming together. One, o, uh, OT is starting to connect, you know, to other networks, which means they're going to eventually be accessible from the internet, which makes it a lot more difficult, you know, to be able to protect. At the same time, we're seeing nation states continue to focus on compromising OT systems as well. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the coming months and years, uh, but the trends aren't actually looking so good right now. So if you were to, uh, if, we, if we had a CIO sitting here right now, uh, and you were talking to them about this report, what are the, first off, how should they regard the information? What should they be doing differently as a result of the information that the report's reviewing? Yeah, I mean, I would say one, um, you know, we always talk about this, it's easier said than done, but you know, going back to the basics and making sure that, that you have good cyber hygiene and being able to um, identify vulnerabilities that exist in your environment. And that, that you know, me just saying that sounds kind of simple, but that really means identifying all the assets that you have in your environment that you're responsible for protecting, number one, and then being able to you know, identify the vulnerabilities that may exist on those things. Um, that's a, it's not the easiest thing to do, but I think it's something that really should be focused on. At the same time though, threats are going to get into your network. That's just a, you know, that's a given. So being able to make sure that you can identify, you know, threats within your environment is extremely important. And then once you identify them, what's the processes for you to go ahead and actually respond and clean up those particular threats? That really is going to be the key. I know it's at a high level, it's much deeper than that, but I think that's where you start. All right. Uh, Anthony Giannomenico, Tony G. Tony G. Uh, thanks very much once again for being on theCUBE and talking to us about FortiGuard's Q1 2018 report from Fortinet. Awesome, well, well thanks for having me. You betcha. So, Anthony Gian, Gian Domenico, <laughs> a senior strategist researcher at FortiGuard Labs of Fortinet, talking to us about the 1Q 2018 report. Once again, this has been a CUBE Conversation. Thanks for listening. <laughs>